He writes and lectures extensively on the relevance of mythology in matters related to leadership, entrepreneurship, branding, management, and governance. He serves as Chief Belief Officer of the Future Group. May I present to you Dr. Devdat Patnayak. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so Firoz asked me to... Um, I met Firoz a couple of weeks ago for a leadership workshop and we were just talking. And he said, does mythology have anything to uh, talk about differently abled uh, people? And he was talking about the inclusion summit and I said, yes, there are many stories. So he said, how come we have never heard of them? And I was quite surprised because most of the stories are there in Amar Chitra Katha. And they are there in um, Chanda Mama. It's just that I guess somewhere along the line, we don't see what is shown to us. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not a grand presentation, I'm going to share three things from Indian mythology, um, which talks about issues of being differently abled. Um, the most famous one, of course, um, is uh, a story which is about 2,000 years old. Um, it's about Dhritarashtra. You know, when you imagine a Vyas writing this great epic and begins with the story of two brothers and the eldest one who is very, very strong is born blind and he's not allowed to be the king. And that's the only data that you have. And I always wonder why Vyas created this little story that there you have the eldest son of the family, which in those days, if the tradition was, the eldest son becomes the king. And he's blind. And because he's blind, he's stopped from becoming the king. And I feel this is an act of extreme cruelty. And yet, when you read the stories and the retelling of the stories over thousands of years, you see storytellers struggling with how to explain and explain the story. You have justifications being given. You have people trying to say that, you know, actually there was a reason for it. Actually, his personality was not so good. Recently, I'm part of the consulting team of the Star Mahabharata and I'm sitting with writers. And we have to write about this episode where the young child, the young prince is denied his throne because he is blind. And I was reading the uh, dialogues which were written and they were extremely disturbing. And because there was an assumption that this was right. And I actually stood up and I was asking them, I said, why do you think it is right? And I saw various crazy attempts, the, the explanations bordered from the mundane to the bizarre to the downright unfair and unjust. And these were young people of the 21st century, educated people, having read so many things, writing these dialogues. And that's what disturbed me. And I'm asking, what kind of a society are we living in? And I think Vyasa has thrown this puzzle at us. And it's a puzzle because when you start reading the scripture, you keep asking, what is lacking that he is denied kingship? Because somebody has told us. And of course, you'll say, but he's the father of the Kauravas. But that's in hindsight, no? That's in hindsight. Kauravas are the villains and therefore their father cannot be king. He said, how do you know? what your children are going to be. Our country is ruled by people who are perfectly good eyes and they have many Kauravas produced. <laughs> it has nothing to do with his eyesight. And then you realize and you ask yourself, who was the eldest in the family at this time? And when you read the, the I'm sorry if you don't know the epic, it's a very famous epic. The household, the head of the household is Bhishma Pitama. And if you read the way he's 
presented in our stories as this great noble man and i have always asked myself if he is such a great noble man why is he killed so ruthlessly in the battle by god in fact you can't kill him because he has the gift of choosing the time of his death so he is pinned to the ground not allowed to move and just bear witness to the world he can't move a finger and i kept saying is there a correlation between this event and his decision to support the denial of kingship to a strong prince simply because he was disabled no answers are given in the epics epics never give answers they just give you puzzles to think about to ask questions to provoke you and i think this is a good way to ask ourselves to familiarize ourselves with ideas it's very easy not to see things in the world i've always believed that in a society we like to invisibilize people who are different from us we like to invisibilize them they don't exist we don't want to see them and yet the epic mahabharata brings it right in front of you it presents the character right in front of you is can you hear me it brings it right in front of you so that you question where would you stand would you let dhritarashtra be king and that's the question we have to ask ourselves would he be included in the great society would he be given the space which by in those laws the eldest son had to get and i think the epic mahabharat an ancient story and i think when you're reading the amar chitra katha to children these are the conversations parents have to have with their children it will provoke children to question things not accept them blindly bhishma is a good man therefore his decision must be right there is no right decision most decisions often are cruel and this in my opinion is an example of a cruel decision of denial of denying people what should be theirs something to think about of course the trust is no divinity is human so let's go from the human world to the world of the gods and let us see whether we see what is right in front of us this is an image of surya the sun god he rides a chariot with seven horses we are this image is found across india you google it you will find it you go to temples you go to navagraha temples you will see this image what we don't see is his charioteer his charioteer is aruna the god of dawn and if you look very carefully his body exists only the upper half of his body the lower half of the body does not exist the story goes that rishi kashyapa had a wife called vinata and she laid two eggs and she wanted the children to be born and she thought that they'll be these mighty children and another wife of rishi kashyapa whose name was kadru had given birth to 1000 eggs she had laid 1000 eggs and each of the eggs produced very quickly serpents were born out of them and she wondered why her children were taking such a long to hatch so uh, okay she was wondering that why were her children taking such a long time to hatch and so in her impatience she broke one of the eggs and the child that is born out of it is incomplete he is born with an upper half and the lower half has not been there and the child flies away into the sky that's what we are told amarshitragada tells us the story too what we are not told is he is given a place in the cosmos he becomes the charioteer of the sun god a place is given he is not excluded he is very much included he is part he is given a space he is a great charioteer 
and you see him every day at dawn and at dusk always there mottled not clear but there a space has been given in the divine pantheon for aruna god of dawn whose upper half is perfect and the lower half is not perfect and yet he is considered divinity but we don't see it we are not told about it we invisibilize aruna and then of course my where i come from i'm from odisha and all my life i have worshiped jagannath and look at the image carefully it's an image of krishna balabhadra and their sister subhadra and krishna is supposed to be shringara murti the most beautiful being on earth but look at the statue carefully no hands no legs no eyelids no nose no ears and yet complete divinity you see i remember when i once asked it's a story which is told and the same story was said i once asked the people ye why is this image like this why is it not complete and the priest said said this everybody asks this question when you enter the temple and the answer given is why you want divinity to be to be just like you who are you to decide how divinity should be who are you to decide what is perfection everything is perfect in nature every plant every animal every living creature is perfect and every living creature is unique and every living creature which is is complete it is the human gaze which decides what is abled and not abled what is perfect and what is not perfect the funny thing is perfection only exists in our imagination doesn't exist in reality nobody is perfect no one none of us are perfect none of us are each one of us lacks something has something we have something we don't have something and therefore we connect with other people and therefore create a network and together try to complete things this image in a way and the songs when you read the songs the songs are repeatedly talking about the deity in the temple who doesn't have hands who doesn't have legs who doesn't have uh, who doesn't have eyelids and so they wonder the poet wonders how does he sleep at night he doesn't have ears and they wonder how do they hear the prayers of the devotees and you're told but you are perfect and i think these ideas these images these stories are trying to communicate something this is trying to co- communicate social cruelty we don't think about it of course this is trying to communicate about inclusion about how vinata sai child is given a place in the cosmos and this talks about what do we consider to be complete and perfect divinity chooses a form and we are told this is perfection this is divinity and we are told darshan karo look carefully look for the divinity in everything unfortunately what do we do when we are given the standard instruction darshan karo look we go to the temple and we shut our eyes and when we shut our eyes we don't see the possibility in everything i think this summit is about seeing possibilities in everything so if there is a message it is open your eyes recognize that everything has a place in the world we just have to find it thank you thank you sir i now request lakshmi prathuri to felicitate dr devdat patnayak